let's keep going. Not quite though, they not a town of nothing. I was fine earlier, and then I ate some popcorn in my throat, so I messed up again. Great. Well, let's go. <laughs> I wonder if this is the town the guy was talking to that has no roads leading to it. Mm -mm. I wonder if it's the story of the person at Five Dogwood Drive. I keep wondering if the person at Five Dogwood Drive is going to be weeping. Not late, am I? Must be our guest. Maybe she's delivering the video. No, we don't start for a few more minutes. You can leave your tape with slow mo crow. Tape? Oh, sorry, I'm Maya. Right, the traveling artist. Welcome. I'm Emily. I um work here. Great. Rita says you're the producer. Oh, did she? Haha, <laughs> I guess so. I do a little bit of everything. Yeah, I know the feeling. You weren't around earlier at the lunch thing? No, I don't live in town. I just come in to work on the station. Really? That's quite a hike, isn't it? I know some shortcuts. Oh, okay. I can make sure she's comfortable. We better get started. I wonder what her deal is. Huh? Guess we better get started? You look busy. No, it's okay. I think we're about ready to start the broadcast. Oh, should I go sit down? Not just yet. Uh, Rita does a little intro. Got it. Okay. Quite a crowd in here. Really? There's like seven or eight of us, I think. Yeah, well, for this town. I've barely seen anyone all day. Oh, yeah. Ghost town. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay, I'll check if Rita's ready. You can just hang out back here somewhere. We'll let you know when it's time to get on set. Great. Thanks for having me. You do. I mean, um, you know what I mean. <laughs> Why am I so awkward with the producer? Just used to seeing the same 12 people day in and day out, I guess. Oh? This is different. Ben and Bob, working on a project. Oh. What is, what is this cup? At least the floor is staying dry. Looks like I just made it before the sky broke open. Alright, so Reno's here to help with the weather report. The video databank. It used to be the other side of the room, and the couch was in this corner. It's further from the windows, too, so some might just bleach the labels. That's a good idea. So much of archiving is just playing hide and seek with weather. Okay, so clicking on them gives them more. That should be cool. Elmo gets a lot more into it when he has some noise to vibe on. Found that radio in the woods a week or two ago. I cleaned the circuits with rubbing alcohol and left it in the sun. Seems like it was working okay again, so why are they taking it apart? I hope the neighbors are okay. Messy cross eye. Be it right. BBB TV. Let's start the show. Okay, ready when you are. There is a look outside. Gross. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Saturn is in retrograde. What does that even mean? Yep. Think it'll let up? I guess we'll see what Elmo says. My poor tomatoes. Okay, in three, two. Hi, it's Rita. This is your evening broadcast, 8192. Wow, it's really raining out there. Damn, I can hear it from here. 
We have a few leaks. Uh, put some pots and bowls underneath them. Thanks, Ron, for lending us your extra pots and bowls. I hope you had a good day, despite the weather. Although it was really nice earlier, right? I had a good day today. I met a new friend. She's going to join us in about a minute or so. Maybe you saw her earlier around lunch, or if you didn't meet her, then you'll meet her in a minute. Or if you met her already, but you still want to hang out, I'm sure there's plenty that we can talk about. Wow, so this is 8192. Is that right, Emily? That sounds reasonable. What is she talking about? To camera. That's a lot of broadcasts. I came in around the fives, so I've only been around for half of them. And back then, in the fives, let's see, we had... I did Night Noise, and we had the Swamp Show, and the Bird Show, and the people were just coming in and dropping off tapes all the time, and... And now, well, now it's just the evening broadcast. But it's not like, I'm not saying we're in decline or anything like that. I love the evening broadcast. I think it was the first show we had on here. It was the first show not produced by the power company. Yes, wait, no, wait, well, technically. It used to be the morning broadcast before Joel was born. Um, there was that drama with the jumping jacks lady. The cameras were over there. What, what was the jumping jacks lady? until the town council decided to block out the mornings for the exercise show. Oh. Yeah, so it's the spine of the station. Or maybe it's the heart? Or is it the skin? What part of the WEVP body do you think this is? Why don't you come on by and tell us about it? We're gonna be here for another 30 minutes or so. Or if you don't want to brave the storm, you can always give us a call. Same number as always. Area code 270-216-5556. Okay, so we're going to start with the tape. This is an old one, it's mine, but maybe you haven't seen it. Or if you've seen it, it's been a while, so maybe you've forgotten. Oh, shit. What? She asked me to cue up her tape from Pueblo de Nada. Where is it? I don't know. It's probably still shelved. I'll find it. Ron silently mouths it. Thank you. Oh, heck. Oh, James left a patch wired up on the image processor. Nice. Maybe there will be time to play with it after the show. Slow Mocro, keeping an eye on the control board. Keep up the good work, Mo. Is it in here? Or is tape should be in here? Emily scans the shelf of video tapes. I had these alphabetical. Maybe it's just on a stack. Help with this. Emily pulls out an odd labeled tape. To herself, impossibly impossible to say. Tape and the old bumpers. Louder for others' benefit. Someone should come in here and label all these. We should put all this in chronological order, although I guess it's hard to remember sometimes the order of things. Some of these tapes were made at the same time, or if we started one video and then started another in the middle and then came back later, and time is out of joint. It's like sweeping a beach. Oh, wait a minute. Ron said he'd start filing the old stuff by language, so something fell behind the shelf here. Ralph borrowed it for a screening, so it's probably with the others in return. Here, Aunt Connie reframed, bare waist studies, death of an airfield, and Weber Janata. Aha! What would you all do without me? You up on Pueblo Janata. There you go, Mo. Hold off on playing, and this is until Rita's done setting it up. Thanks, babe. Well, you're the most invaluable member of this crew, did you know that? Ready when you are, Rita. Some people that lived here a long time ago, before the company town, became the- before the airstrip, like over a hundred years ago. Okay, so, I hope you enjoy it. Gently. Ready, Emily? I wonder what Maya thinks of the dock. This is cool. Have you seen it before? You think anyone I have is making small talk? Yeah, it's something else. Sound convinced, haha. Uh -huh. It's not a bad way to learn about history, though. It helps Rita edit this. She did a lot of research for this. I can't remember where the music from this video came from. I swear I've heard this music before other informational page. 
few days more scary brought us up. We found a crate of old tape reels in the hangar. Must have been from the power company. Maybe some music to pipe over the loudspeakers in town and keep spirits high. It is history, right? Or is it just a story? Good tape. Seems kind of sad now. This is kind of a memorial. The draw always sad. A memorial to the people who used to live here. Or is there even a difference? Although, now the tape is just here. Every once in a while, we dust it off and stuff around the airwaves again like an old dog. Sorry, did I say something wrong? Oh, no. Haha, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I just had some weird shit tonight. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, sure, it's okay. Sorry, I switched up. Don't worry about it. You should... Oh, should I go sit? Yeah, um, it's almost over. I can understand a little parts of that, like, starting a town and whatnot. We just had a forest that might be stuck in town tonight. Next up is my empty. So, where are you staying tonight? Here in town? Oh, good. Yeah. Even before the storm came in, I thought it'd be nice to get some rest before the long hike back to the highway. Ron offered his log? What? He said he could sleep in his log. Oh, honey, he's talking about his barn. Ron, nobody wants to sleep in your barn. Ron shrugged. It's not haunted, but it is haunted. How did that rumor start? Hauntings aside, it's not a very comfortable barn. I mean, I could sleep anywhere, but I think the last time Bob slept in there, he needed a tetanus shot after. But that's Bob, he's a hypochondriac. I'm not even sure he really needs it. Um? He'll stay at the place. Oh, thanks. Oh, wrong. With that storm coming, I should probably find somewhere to stay out here tonight. Maybe I'll just sleep here in the studio. Well, I guess the loft is free, if I dare. And maybe the storm won't be so bad. I'd be able to put something together in the studio. Do you need anything? Actually, uh, do you have an extra toothbrush? Nice to sleep under the sun. Oh, I think I do, actually, yeah. Oh my god, I've been in the woods, you know. Right. I actually used a twig this morning. I kind of chewed up on it. <laughs> it's the night, though. I've done that. Really? I'm disappointed. I thought I invented it. Even better, you can chew on some pine needles. It really freshens the breath. I mean, it's not perfect. Wow, that's roughing it. Just close your eyes and pretend, I guess. Right, exactly. And even then, it's just not the, it's just not the same as real toothpaste. What the hell are they talking about? Do they know we're rolling? Emily waves to Rita. Rita, to camera. Oh, okay. Hi, um, so, I hope you enjoyed that video. Like I said, that was from, like, it's several years old, I can't remember exactly. I enjoyed it very much. Oh, thank you, bye. What's next? Draw and take. Oh, okay, you good? I'll queued up. I'm gonna check on the boys. Boys? These boys? Lads over here? What the hell are they doing? Ben and Bob are seated on the couch, poking at the electronic innards of a radio. So then it won't be a Okay, that's where they live, right? Um, no, you just want that constant static noise. Right, the noise, that's where they live. They don't live anywhere, dude, they're ghosts. Okay, why does it matter what you turn the radio? In the radio. It's like soil in your garden, you need rich. Right, mashed up, rotted leaves and stuff like compost. Okay. Oh, hey, Em. What's the show? Well, what the hell are they doing? There's something stuck in his beard. Oh, uh, you know, it's a piece of food. Actually, maybe it's a pretty good progress on the ghost. Maybe you can take it on with a pure leaf garland, but it's only one little accent leaf. 
Air is calling still, eh? Good job. Hope you'll be health. And play it back later. Hey, you've got something in your beard. No. The radio crackles as it scans rapidly across the spectrum. Such as the radio voice is mixed with colored noise and unfamiliar interference. Did you hear that? That was definitely a voice from beyond the grave. It sounded like, um... I clearly heard dogwood in there. Yeah, kinda. It sounded more like frogwood to me. What the hell is frogwood? Now I don't tell the ghost what to say. <laughs> Did you hear that, Emily? It did sound like frogwood. <laughs> dogwood. I didn't hear anything. Just to be honest, I should play along though. They've been working on this for a while. I didn't hear a voice at all. I guess it doesn't matter. The ghost voices don't really come out until you play back the recording later. They only exist in recordings. Like a copy without an original. A mirror reflecting something that isn't in the room. Eerie. Like the mounds. The burial mounds here in town? You think they're haunted? No. Or... Sure, probably, but I meant they're like the reflection. The people who made them lived hundreds of years ago. That whole society is long gone, and now we just have these lingering echoes without any trace of content. Yeah, that is kind of eerie. So the ghosts speak, and we can't hear it, but the tape recorder... Is that right? I don't know. Sometimes I think it's more like the recording itself. Like, that's what ghosts are. Recordings of events that didn't happen. Or something keeps leaving new marks even after it's gone. False memory. I wonder if that's true in cities too, with the rain makes the fall empty. I'm trying to remember, what's a big city I've been in when it rained? Oh, Chicago. Downpour on Western Avenue. We took shelter in a gas station. Does it just look empty because everyone stays inside? No, there's something uncanny about a town in a thunderstorm. It's like a reanimated pulp. is not sustainable. <laughs> Bowl is on the floor getting full pretty quickly. I hope somebody is planning to empty these. Somebody else. It's Ron's big moment. So, okay, Ron, anything that you want to tell us about that tape? Everything on that tape was wild. Really? Everything? Wild stuff indeed. Even the horses? Everything on that tape was wild. <laughs> I bought some forged folk tapes at the yard sale. Planes used to leave these thick black marks on the runway of this little airship. I should tell everyone about this donut shop in Sonora. I accidentally clicked that, but I probably would have been anyway. Donut Park. I told everyone that had amazing coolers, trying to convince them to stop there with me anytime we were in the area. But the reason it stuck in my head was the name. I just thought it was a thing. Were the horses wild? I thought, I thought those were the horses here. Oh, the neighbors? We called the horses here the neighbors. No, I didn't recognize that one. Okay, so this is... This is the town with no roads to it, where there are just bikes in the crowd. One morning, on our way back after a late gig, the sun was coming up, then in Bob and I found ourselves on 65 and Sonora exit, prime donut eating that works we stopped by. I don't think there were any wild horses anymore. Really? How could that be? Oh, well, they've all been domesticated. Are the neighbors domesticated? We don't own them, no. They're, um... Barrel? It wasn't called Donut Party, it was just called Donut. I thought I, I said I thought they changed the name, but why? Then I noticed there was a party supply store across the street. The donuts weren't even very good. But the weird part is I still fantasize about stopping by the real Donut Party and having some of those amazing rules. In fact, the desire is only for a moment. Okay, in your documentary, you said that the people who used to live here could breed their horses. Exactly, but... Uh, you can freak your pet cat, but it won't turn back into a panther. Right. That's kind of haunted, kind of goat, like Ben was saying. But everything is a goat here these days. It's a ghost town, people still living in it against all reason. Most of the houses are empty, despite all the pain in the town system. This evening broadcast, the travesty creepy. There's always been people here. After the Pueblo de Nada, the community here, but then the company. On the WDVD. What about the dogs? Uh, yeah, Ron. The dog wild? Everything on that tape was wild. 
somehow, just as the class group dies out, some new utopian project of responding to a way to take hold. What is it about this place? It must be the well. It doesn't look wild to me. I think this is a matter of perspective. Not sure I agree, but now it's time for the fun part. Thanks again. I'm hanging on a long past our expiration date. Well, the weather should be pretty wild. I can hear it for myself right now. Yeah, getting pretty intense out there. Do you get storms like this a lot? More and more. Right, of course. And then, of course, the actual ghost. Alright, here's Elma with the weather report, and lucky us, we also have Siren of Cole, who's quite as in the drum. Excuse me. I think it's going to be the drum call me later tonight, and the cocktail after the show. So, let's go live to Elmo for the weather report. Oh, is Elmo ready? I should make sure the camera's pointed in the right direction. I'll put standing water on the floor and a hole in my boot. Oh, my socks are getting wet. Elmo and Cyrano are keeping this weather report. So tricky. Where about this ratio is of oil, water, and dyes? It seems to be precise, but the minimum we will have to drop at this time. It must have been a lot of trial and error, just staring at a circle of light on the floor of the trip trip. But you can't use a butt, don't you? Then have this guy and. Oh, wait, you mean the projection stuff? I mail order these sample dyes. This other stuff is just mineral oil, like you can get at the drugstore. The projector. Somebody just left it here, man. Incredible. Roofs are leaking all over town. Actually, it was that girl who does the pirate video stuff, you know, jamming her signal. Weaver. Yeah, yeah. A resident ghost. Ghost, huh? Really think she's dead? Does it matter? Of course it matters. Maybe not. What do you mean by that? Black flooding to me. I guess you're right. A ghost is just an absent person, whether they're dead or not. That's what I think. Hey, you think she'll get us tonight? It's about time, right? He's right, we're about to. Like, finally can see the video? Plus, that is the retrograde. So I hear. Not that we keep a strict schedule, but it's never longer than a month or two between... Uh, what does Mimi call them? I know they're bad for the general vibe around here, but can I be honest? Emily nods back and mocks the gravity. I kinda like it when she bumps in and takes over her signal. It's like a fog falling on the road. Reminds you that the fall needs to be trees. Intervention. That's what Mamie calls it. It's been going on for a couple of years now. How does she do it? Her performance is cool, though. I never saw her, um, perform, but I heard about it. Oh yeah, I saw her do it a few times. I was into it. The first time she jammed our signal and showed up in our broadcast, I didn't know who she was. She'd already disappeared when I came in and took over her old job. She did lectures, right? Yeah, you could say that. I thought of them as storytelling sessions. We talked for hours. Shuffled slide after slide of shapes, numbers, weird constellations. Who knows what any of them meant? Everyone was so excited and confused and scared a little. Defensive. Still are. And this was her projector. Right. I don't know where she got it, though. It still works really well. I got a spare bulb and a research job, but I haven't had to use it yet. Strange. I never think of what she's doing is stuff, really. Sounds like Elma. Right. What happened to the rest of her stuff? I bet her slides are still here on the studio. Maybe with the posters? Sherry has all Weaver's old notebooks. I know that. She keeps them in her archive, you know? The big blue filing cabinet. Daisy hanging on, hanging on. Yeah, anyway, the real hard part to find is these two pieces of glass. They have to be paired very precisely. I had to get them from the clock store over in Glasgow, where they come from the clock vases. Thanks for the tips, dude. Anytime, dude. Socks are getting wet. Love to have wet socks. Thanks, I'm almost all right now. So, next we have a selection from the video database. You're gonna like this one. This one, Maya, this one's about caves. Ooh. Yeah, local caves. We played this one a lot. It's pretty cool. Oh, we have a phone call. Should we get it now, or do 
Okay, we'll get it. We'll get it now. Okay. We're gonna press the button on the telephone next to Hello, Gypsy VP. You all packed a lunch, sounds like this is going to be a long one. She's getting a little damp, but then involved in some time. Those like panels are swelling a little. Is that really happening? Are we about to get drenched? No wakes back here just yet. The tapes are safe at the moment. I have a bad feeling to do with that. Then I'll be scrounging for a tarp to protect the video data bank. Someone, Mimi, I think, was tracking Weaver's appearance as here. She could jot down the time and date whenever there was an intervention. Mimi hasn't been by in a few weeks, though. What was that last She was an say. Oh, wait, she just wrote time, it's not dates. That's not very helpful. They're all at night. I guess that's the pattern. Oh, and here's Ron's recipe for mac and cheese. Six cups of, six cups of milk. Mac and cheese. Hey, babe. Can I, can I pet the crow? Hey, babe. Slow-mo crow. A click and a jitter. Do you know Weaver? Are you staying around town tonight? <laughs> No, I don't think anyone would mind. Maybe I'll stay here with you. I don't feel like trekking back in this weather. Plus, it's so quiet here at night. Anyway, I sleep better here. I think it's You know what I mean? The hum. Lots of people. James called me that. I don't remember. He was showing me on the oscilloscope how that weird hum creeps into every other electrical signal in town. Oh, it just looks like Jim from Rolling Hills. One of our little mysteries, like the out of town one. Oh, really? Did you know him well? <laughs> oh, I had no idea. <laughs> it was terrible what happened to him. So, what do you think? Right, just someday. What a waste. Sad. Well, have fun. I'm gonna see a job for them. Okay. Hello, Mo Crow, you are the backbone of this entire studio. Oh my god, he's still going.
was at the store or was it saying on phone lines and it was really flaky. Business as usual. He has a really soon thing with it. That's job. He's a regular. He's asleep. <laughs> I indicate Vaughn, who has fallen asleep in his chair. <laughs> oh, well. Let him sleep. Okay, well, let's play the ticket. This is cave art. It's a classic around here. Excited. Looks like Mo's got this one all queued up. Way to go, Mo. Finish my small box. I should let Maya enjoy the tape. Seems interesting. So if we were the ghost by some read upon mission and mechanics, that means WBBPGB is haunted. Should we be doing something about that? Aren't you supposed to, like, put an exorcism or something? I mean, you can't just leave the place haunted. That would be negligent. I miss her, though. I guess there are good ghosts and bad ghosts. Like, spiders, good in the garden, bad in the shower. A loud crashing noise from outside wakes Ron up. What the hell? It's a dead. I'll check it out. Yikes, should we go help? Oh, he's... Oh, the tape is over. What did you hit me? That was great. Yeah, I like that one. I kind of... That sounded pretty close. Oh no, is the power out? Or just the light? I don't know, it's... Let's take a look. Maybe a fuse blew on a relay or something. Some scared rat scooter the fire. Abandoned ship? Just kidding. I'll take a look around and see if anything smoke it. I wonder if that weird hum in our wires pushes the power is out. Of they can't connect the fuse to the oscilloscope. That's the thing about real mysteries. You can't even trust your instincts. So how dark it is. So it's like feathers or sorry, mom. How are you holding up? I know you need it dark. I'll talk to them. I'm not even going to think about the video data bank. It's fine, right? Surely it's fine. It's fine. This storm just wiped the town off the map. Where would everyone go? Would Elmo disappear into the woods or go down to the Echo River Relay? Echo River and Flood District there. Damn weather down there, right? That's a spectre float. You're not late for your games. No. He made it. I think so. Are you having trouble with. Oh, spoke too soon. I thought your power was up. Yeah, it, uh, just came back on. Weird. That's a... Made it. In this storm. Oh, I've never missed the evening podcast. To be honest, it's the only time I get to share my work. Mickey's preparing a tour trip out of town. I wonder how many people even tune in at this point. Is she reading her poetry to us here in the studio? Sure, of course. Great. Wow, it's cool. power. You, uh, I think they have some paper towels over by the second. Oh, thank you. Well, ready to go? Okay, the ceiling is falling apart. Doesn't bode well for the room. Some of the studio wiring is coupled. It's dangerous, right? Everybody else seems concerned about it. Okay, I'm just going to bring the seat back. Now we enter the culture section of tonight's program. We fixed it? Came back on its own. It'll just take a second for the equipment to warm back up, then we'll be on the air again. The disaster out there. The neighbor's barn is basically underwater. Wow, so just completely. Yeah, just completely flooded. I passed Ron on the way in. He's gonna take a look and see if there's anything he can do. Is he okay? Ron knows what he's doing. He's keeping it's a little bit different though, right? Yes. Nikki has some white paper towels to read it. Oh, thanks. Nikki pulls a journal out of her jacket. I have brought my work. Oh, good. Nikki reads her poetry. It's a weekly feature of our broadcast. Oh, great. I look forward to hearing you. Yeah, I just hope you can keep going. You have less power a little while before, right? Better get started then. I can't. Through the out of town. 
what evil flew you to your final bed? It was not men who brought you there to sleep. Men who left you bloodied then and fled, exposing mud and muddy water. Wild turkey is off of boat and care. The wife of the moss beneath the cut lids clear. Cardinals pull the tricks out from their hands to wash their hands and feet with a picture. When wood dust put the rest in gown, pigeons fashion shoes from leaves and bark. Who then sewed flowers into a burial crown? The one who made your headdress with the hawk. Men who broke your bondage were they? The vultures who stayed home on your funeral day. Emily, look at the monitor! Be quiet, we're live right now. No, we're not, look! That's not our book. Yeah, there she is, I'm home to write. It's her, we were. Oh, really? Tonight? Sorry about this, Maya. What's going on? Local Frank. It jams our signal every once in a while. Remember the stars are coming. Frank's the word I would use. So, what do you do about it? Just wait until she's done. We've never been able to stop her from jamming us. We don't even know how she does it. Get back on in a minute, though, don't worry. Do I finally get to see it? Oh no. Oh fuck. Okay. Well then, fuck dude. Start Act 5, I guess. Act 5, Scene 1. A Town. Give me just a minute. That's everything, right? How did this all fit in that truck? I'm afraid you carried more than your share. It's bigger on the inside. It's so bright. Sun is shining. I think it rained. So we hear. Rained a lot, I mean. The worms are gonna be out for sure. May I use your phone, Miss Shannon? Oh, yeah, um, ah, oh, shit, the battery's dead. So we ready to go? Anyway, who would you have called? Probably Julian, right? I was gonna call Julian. No, I thought you might have some games on there. Who is Julian? He has a phone? Uh, yeah, obviously. Who is Julian? <laughs> Long story. My brother. So, where is Five Dogwood Drive? I don't want to hold this stuff any further until we know exactly where we're going. I'll go scout ahead. I think I see some houses over there. Okay, holler if you find anything. It's a nice morning for a walk, but a bit muddy. They're chasing a dragonfly now. Hello. That's a damn shame, that's what you call it. Aww. Hmm? Distressed meow. Oh no. Well, what do you know anyway? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just upset. Oh, 
reassuring, Meow. You're right. Now I am a cat. <laughs> in this house. So not too sad. No, no, I think it should be happy. Right. It's a remembrance. Right. Like a monument. Mary Ann lives here? Totally. So, they should be represented with dignity and respect, of course. Of course. But not to the point where it makes everyone feel they have to be serious when they're standing under it. Does that make sense? No, yeah, it definitely does. I think I have an idea. Great. I'll just dig in. Thanks, Marianne. Happy to help. Think it'll rain anymore? No. I don't see any clouds. Hell, it'll probably rain anyhow. Oh. Just our luck. <laughs> oh, really? He thinks it's gonna rain again tomorrow. Haha. <laughs> nah. I don't know, man. Animals have a sense for the weather. Oh. <laughs> Not seeing any street signs. Mm -mm. Oh. These places. Oh. Paints and chalk in the small bag, diary in the large bag, stuffed dog in the small bag, photograph of Chris in the large bag. No, in the small bag, Sandra could decide should she keep the photo of her husband or should Alex keep the photo of his father? Uh, she wrapped the diary in a towel before stuffing it into a bag, feeling slightly silly doing it. Fraser had been on a tier collecting all written material as community property lately. Mm -hmm. She was sure he couldn't possibly have meant even a personal diary, but... Was she sure? She set everything down, closed her eyes, massaged her temples, and wondered not for the first time. How Fraser had consolidated so much invisible power so quickly. 
how had he done it? Had he in fact done anything at all to claim this incredible lattice of influence? Or had they simply blindly given it to him? This one has like an all window front. Oh, is that Ezra over there? Oh, that's mannequins? Will it still fly? Oh, yes, she just got banged up a little in the storm. At first, they only observed the truck from a distance. It was an alien carcass, something that made more sense in death than in life. The company intruded it off in the middle of the day, when everyone went to the plant. They let it sit overnight, alone and strange. Nikki thought it was ridiculous, but Ron approved. To Elmo, the truck was simply beautiful. He thought it was elegant. He liked the idea of passing it every day, of observing it from different angles and distances. He didn't care if they used it or not. Anyway, there weren't any roads in town, unless you maybe counted the old airstrip. Everyone had to agree this was money and attention that would have been better spent addressing the town's drainage problems. Manny maybe finally gets to on that damn messianic ditch. Still, they had a few things to dispose of. Broken flower pots, empty glass bottles, clothes that didn't fit anymore. They gradually fell into the habit of collecting waste and carrying it to the truck. Once a month, some shadows would come in from the night woods and fall the garbage away on a cart. Hmm. I'll still fly? Oh yes, he just got banged up a little in the storm. I'll have her up and running again by this afternoon, I'm sure. Can I fly it? Well, how's your upper body strength? Uh, it's good. Really good. This old girl is operated by pulleys. I mean, 100% mechanical. Well, except for the throttle. I could do that. I admire your confidence, young man. Yep, just a little bent metal. I'll have her skyworthy, skyworthy again in a matter of hours. Wow. I've been doing this a long time, kiddo. I didn't mean to go all the way around. <laughs> what is this? Oh no! The whole radio station fell down. Or the TV station. All the crow. <laughs> Elmo gave Rita a tour of the cameras and wiring. She'd just been through a certificate program on public broadcasting at the community college, so no surprises there. Nikki showed, up, Nikki showed her the video data bank. James demonstrated the sand-in image processor. And then Ron came barreling in with an urgent expression. The station had a great collection of videotapes made by local artists, along with a huge library of what looked like home movies. Those were tapes about local politi politics, the weather, video dream diaries. Rita was eager to start contributing her work. It wasn't quite the radical guerrilla television group she dreamed of joining. This group seemed more interested in sharing the town's home movies and culture jamming and interfering with corporate stations, but she liked the focus on local concerns. Ron's news was clearly bad news. Rita's heart sank a little as they listened. She knew things were unraveling, knew from experience what that looked like. But as she listened to Ron's detail, the power company's sudden withdrawal from town affairs, she heard other possibilities. She studied their faces and found concern sure, but also something like a relief. 
hope and awakening of play, Nikki looked like she might have been daydreaming. These were people, Bearded decided, ready to step out of the company's shadow and build something of their own. Ron said the TV station would still be funded by Ford Warner. Could that be their anger? How are you doing, crow? Are you okay? Can I, can I meow with the crow? Oh. Mm. Oh, we're friends now. Thank you for the information. What is this? Can I get over there? It looks like I'm not afraid of water. Hmm. This thing's creeping me out. I'm gonna get out of here. Who are these? Six or seven men stood in the sun about a dozen yards from the ditch, and he could hear them laughing. He tried not to hear them. Instead, he listened to the shovel punching through the dirt as he shaped the trench. It was wet dirt and mud, really, and made a hungry sound as he shaped the trench walls. The glare from the new sun, new sun made his sinuses tingle. The trench was a foot wide now, but by the time he was done, he expected it to be about twice that, and run most of the way from the middle of town over to could drain off into the creek. The laughter quieted into greedy troubles, and he could feel the men approaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that over there? Another ghost, I guess. Waffles for the weather? Where are you going? George scanned the shelf. He quickly found the book he was looking for. There were only a few dozen left, more shelves than books now, the result of an experiment called the New Selection. Privately, he called it the Purge. A Crystal Age, Anonymous, a fairly recent publication. George flipped through the pages for a minute. The binding was stiff. Fraser didn't trust anonymity. He had an almost pathological need to see everything clearly and plainly. Transparency. But what was Fraser? Fraser proposed and executed experiments just like any other community member, but his experiments had a scorched earth quality. They were all destructive. 
to move from one area of community life to the next in search of excess to cut back. Lately, he turned his sights to the library. The new selection meant decimating the store of books according to Fraser's own inscrutable criteria. Now we are guaranteed something vital every time we take a book from the shelves. No more time lost to printed chat. Fraser's colorless voice echoed in Jordan's mind. It felt like spinning. Instead, he tucked the book under his arm and set off to the woods. Hello. Oh, hi, kitty. Where did you come from, huh? Follow a bird up here? It's a dragonfly, actually. These folks, the one who built this thing, they chase birds, too. Really? That's what they wrote. They followed some migrating birds up here from Central America. Somewhere up to Florida. And then here. <laughs> well, that's what they wrote anyway. I guess it might have been a metaphor. Can I say hi to this other cat? A lizard darts out from beneath a rock. No sign of lizard now. Do I just keep coming up to this other cat every time it's trying to hunt something and messing it up? Waffles for any weather. Okay, that's what it says. Where is that? Where is that one going? I think that was the same one that was walking this way. Now it's just going, going over there. A bell? Huh? Wow, how did you get out of there? They must have been pretty nice pigs if they let you ride them like that. Hmm? They were perfect gentlemen. I made myself as light as a feather and they didn't even know I was there. Then what happened? You're lucky. Then I found the library of television. Later I had to cross the desert of broken glass. What is the library of television? There were TVs everywhere as soon as you walked in the door. Every channel was playing at once. The sound was deafening. I had one eyeball pointed at a cooking show and the other at a crime show. Each tiny hair in my ear canal was listening to a different TV. <laughs> there were so many voices, I kept hearing my name, but I couldn't figure out which TV said it was coming from. On one of the TVs, I saw the most terrible vision. I won't even describe it to you. It would give you nightmares. Wow, I'm glad you got out of there. Sounds scary, but also kind of cool. Exactly. I'll take you there sometime if you want. I'll never go there again. But you should check it out. <laughs> Did I tell you I discovered the place where all the garbage goes? I was traveling with some strange companions for a while, too, but not as strange as yours. Where does all the garbage go? I've always wondered. You mean the dump? Do they just let it pile up somewhere forever? Does it just turn, turn into dirt somehow? Oh, no, it's much more exciting than that. You're on the right track, but... What they do is they take some water out of the ocean and replace it with garbage. There's a big fire at the center of the earth. It's been burning basically forever. Mm -mm. The fire grows bigger and bigger as we pile on more garbage. Someday it'll burn out of control and it all will be lost. The fire is maintained by ancient dinosaurs. They burn themselves so many times there's nothing left but oily bones. I got to ride in a big truck and a tugboat. I an old dog and some musicians. Then we both had quite an adventure. Wow, I'm jealous, but I won't let it ruin our friendship. <laughs> we should stick together. Well, maybe I'll see you at the museum sometime. I agree completely. 
It's a nice idea, but you should stay with your friends. I think they still need your help. Huh. What is this? What is this big bell? Hmm, can't examine that. Or wait. There we go. No, the poor horse. Oh. Oh. This shouldn't have happened. We should have prepared better. Aww. All of us. Oh. So no pig. Most of the, all that damn company who built this place, they left it only half built when they pulled out of town. Damn shame. How are they doing? Jim, Buck, and Johnny strain to hear the noises coming from the well. There's that weird flippy singing again. It's like two people talking, but not to each other. Talking to themselves, maybe? Or each alone? Maybe they're on the phone? Johnny shades his eyes with his hand. You think the truck's okay down there? Oh, my eyes aren't adjusting to this light. How are your eyes, Cricket? Should we head back underground? Wanna borrow mine? Mm -hmm. Nah, let's see this through. Could be fun. Yeah, but probably soon. Yeah, maybe they could look around. What are they doing over here? Oh, wait. I need to meow at them. Yeah, oh, it echoed. Don't know what message I sent in cat, but I sent it. How are they doing? And now you return to Chicago? Just taking one last look. You said you were sketching? Researching? Not much left to look at, is there? Yeah, I just came down to see this ancient earthwork. I made stuff like this, kind of. It's beautiful, right? This big mound. Why did they build this huge, um, dirt spiral? Most of these ancient artworks are thought to be burial mounds, but this one definitely isn't. To be honest, I don't know what it was for. Ah, it's just art. It's all just art. I dropped a popcorn. Where are you going? Oh, the other one's off the thing now. Mary Ann, right? What's he doing? Ah, oh, it's a wind. She's trying to pull the horse in. Aww. Weird dirt spiral. What kind of fish are those? To herself, they were beautiful animals. 
No, I should say. They were beautiful souls. Simply that they were our neighbors. You know? And they're free. I should say that they're free. I should focus on their character. Mm -hmm. Only what do I mean by free? Unburdened? Only what do I mean by free? Empowered? Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, I didn't see you there. New in town? Picked a hell of a day. Oh, hello. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm writing something. A, uh, sort of a poem. We're just dropping something off here. Do you think I should stay here? Oh? Well, you better hurry up. They might already be gone. Good luck. I'm off to work on my poem. Can you tell us where it is? Do you know where Dogwood Drive is? Over here before. Okay, that's where this was. Oh, they're all meeting over here. Well, the mailbox is Five Dogwood Drive. Do you hear music? Is this it? Is there any mail in there? Is there a doormat? Sometimes the key is under a doormat. What am I saying? Like if someone wrote them a letter, maybe their name is on it. Just don't open any that say final notice. Those are a secret. It just showed up, the house. Oh, is this your place? We're time for a new construction, but what do I know? When? Where did it come from? Who lives here? I haven't seen anyone. Emily shrugs. Feels warmer in here somehow, right? Nobody lives here? Warmer and brighter. Strangely comfortable. Nobody lives here? It's actually quite spacious. Well, somebody ordered some furniture. If someone does live here, they keep it pretty tidy. Yeah, you can fly a plane in here. Bigger than it looks. The light in here is pretty great, actually. What this town needs is a kitchen. Yeah, it's a good space to read a book. I could set up a new workshop here. Why is everyone getting all inspired? Ah. I could fix TVs again, or whatever people need. Hell, I could fix toasters. Maybe work on that, uh, that big video synthesizer thing. Fix that up. I could really fit a lot of books in here. I'd love to perform in a place like this at sunset. So much stuff just spread all over the place from the storm. I don't feel like I'm on stage right now, actually. You know what I mean, man? Yeah, but who's the audience? Everybody's leaving. Weird acoustic. Like you get little echoes before the sounds themselves. I like it. Feels like it's time to move forward. We need to make sure and preserve some of this stuff before the next big storm. Hmm. So whoever lives here next will make a good perform. May only be a show for the raccoons. Because there will always be bugs. That's what I like about bugs. I like to see that. <laughs> we saved what we could. Uh oh? Hey, cat, I'll race you. Oh, where are we racing? From here to that pile of mail, okay? Wait, wait, where's the- where is that the pile of mail? Come stand here, this is the starting line. Go! Ah! 
well you won. Alright. All I can see is blues, I'm the best one. Yes, you are. She watched him. She stood in her own shadow. A few deer hunters and talkers walked past but said nothing to the seer. Didn't even look. She studied the path. This was the path the seer had found in their scrying game. A series of private dice rolls and inscrutable diagrams. The community trusted this game. It had led them to fish-filled streams, intimate knowledge of the elements and stars. Even here to the Seanote settlement. They trusted it without understanding it, and now the game had revealed to the seer this vital route, which would lead them to safety before the next floods came. At the end of the route, she had seen a safe, quiet place. Caverns of leathery black birds, a lake of eyeless fish, a towering flame. Now the diver walked the mounds, memorizing the route. He was almost ready. Is that who you are? Oh. Yeah, do you see that weird ghost? Oh, hi kitty. Yes, that's a cat. Aww. Yes, it's a beautiful day. Guess the weather was pretty bad last night, though. You're a chatty one, aren't you? <laughs> sure, whatever you say, haha. <laughs> Alright, well, take it easy. Can I get a waffle? Can I please get a waffle? Oh, what's what's up here? Where did I even just go? Oh, is the cat going all the way around here? There we go. What are you two doing? Choppy sees today, Captain. Aye, right, Captain. Let's reinforce the sails. Yep. Clyde lay on his back on the runaway, hands folded behind his head, halfway between dreams and the afternoon sun. He entertained the momentary delusion that he'd survived a plane crash and was vaguely unhappy when the dream faded. Coming into land, he'd slammed into a truck. Into a truck. The driver probably thought the runway was another road. The runway smelled like oil. Years of leaky light aircraft taking off and landing. All the state said was that they wanted to knock down some trees, many trees, and build a road tying this small town to the larger web of streets and highways that entombed the rest of the country. The Clyde and his inner circle of stunt pilots turned mail carriers knew that a road would be the end of their secluded paradise. Your hang out. Some of these are really old. Maybe we should open them. That's illegal. <laughs> Ha 
Haha, <laughs> he says not to open other people's mail, kid. I know what he said. So if they're not even here to open it themselves? I won't tell a soul. <laughs> Rita tore up weeds. Elmo stood next to her with a bucket. She passed him the rooted weeds, and he stuffed them in the bucket. They worked this way for a few hours. Dark clouds drifted slowly closer, but wouldn't arrive until evening. Rita and Elmo left to get some tea. The bucket of weeds sat warming in the sun. The dandelions wilted and clover dried. Some wayward insects continued to eat. No, keep the clover. Clover is good. When Rita and Elmo returned, they assumed the roles and continued working. The garden was coming along as well as they could hope, given months of neglect. When the plant shut down, the company abruptly pulled out the area and took a large part of the town's population with it. This included Car the Carter Carver family, who attended its garden, the largest and most productive in town for years. Rita and Elmo worked until it started to rain. The rain washed their sweat into the dirt. I'm looking forward to gardening season again. What's that over here? Until it finally, it just gave away. But you did good work, it's not your fault. They didn't let you finish, that's all. If they let you finish, I'll forget about it. This place would be dry as a bone. You always did good work. Is she talking to the out of towner? Whoever that is? It's a memorial. Aw. How's the packing come along? Mm -hmm. Go out that far. Oh. oh man. What's this? Oh man, it's totally broken. Waterlog tapes. They might still play. Who knows? Not that all the VCRs were shot. I don't even know where to put all this. I hate to call it trash. I wonder if that garbage truck still works. Aww. Should I go check the garbage truck? Um. Nice little setup you got. It ain't like it used to be around here, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's alright. Many afternoons are coming on right here, listening to the radio, taking a break from some maintenance work. I wish I had a space like this to work on the bike. How's she looking anyway? What kind of bike you got? It's a custom job. A vicious cycle. What do you know about motorcycles? Yeah, I've been on one or two, but I never got too excited about them. I always admired them from afar. No, above. I guess you don't have much use for a bike in a town with no roads. How's the, pan how's the plane looking anyway? There was one thing Cass always insisted on about this place. No roads leading in or out. Hell, we can always fly. To tell you the truth, I've long suspected the reason Cass never wanted any roads here was just to keep the horses safe. And now... 
Kinda wonder why there aren't any horses. Hello. <laughs> there you are. I think this other cat was looking for you. Will you be a family now? Funny how you stick together and you still act like you're alone. That's the cat way, huh? Always alone together. Miss Shannon's like that, I think. Just like that old man we were traveling with. I really hope he's okay. He can't help it though, I think he forgot how to do anything else. He seemed like it made him unhappy, but he thought he deserved it, I guess. Mm -mm. Well, hello. Oh, hello, Desby. This is a game called Ken ah, Kentucky Route Zero that I've been playing for a while. It's a very strange game. Nope, dead to the world. Okay, she's passed out, let her sleep. Just try again later, I guess. Like, only here before? Apparently I'm just exploring this strange little town in the middle of nowhere. Also, I'm a cat. There's really never been a road to this place? Why not? So how did you all get food out here? That's what I figured. How'd they manage that? <laughs> Makes sense to me. Haha, <laughs> why? Detailed series of chitters. I guess we could, but it sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, okay. Will you stick around to help? Oh. You're right, I'll think about it. Okay then, guess we better get started. Cool, I'll just be exploring this area. Huh? The seer reclined high in a tree, carving fine details into a small wooden pipe. She done the bulk of the carving over hazy mornings with the stone worker. He smoked constantly. She only smoked when she was happy, or very sad, or bored. From this height, she could see the earth movers, shaping the mounds under the draftsman's supervision. She could see him inspecting his plan, the drawing he'd made from her game, the map. What is the map? This headstone has no name on it. Who's this here? All I can read is better days. Maybe it belongs to a wild animal. Maybe it was his choice. Some stubborn old man not wanting the town to fuss over him even in death. It's good they honored his wishes. I'm sure this is what Uncle Andreas wants. Well then, you should give it to him. Still, a burial is not only for the dead. Aww. Oh yeah, she's the one with the uncle who... Oh, she painted a horse on the barn. The uncle who was uh, dying of some terminal illness and didn't want visitors. Oh, hey, how you doing, man? He's having a hard time. 
of corn neighbors. Follow the path. Is it getting brighter? Does it work? I don't know, I think you wind it here. No, it doesn't work. I could probably fix it. Oh, you could definitely fix it then. And then you'd have a new robot room. Then I'd have a new then I'd have a new robot friend. I think I keep scaring away. I keep scaring away that cat's target. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, is it a memorial for the horses? Oh, no, miss. They don't scare me at all. If you met them, you'd feel the same way, I'm sure. I'm just curious, I guess. I know them pretty well by now, but I'd like to have known them better. I don't know. This one I think is called George. He left us some clues in books a while back. The oldest one here is quite a mystery to us all. Very particular. I leave the radio on for him at night. He seems to like the AM call-in shows, but just out of tune. Sometimes Rita finds a book from the old library, and we leave it out for him. I think he likes that. Got to imagine he likes it anyway. Oh, wouldn't you? Guess you must keep pretty busy. Uh, for me, it's back on the road, a performance in Nashville. I should go home to Lithuania. I'm beginning to think I might stay here. Is that ridiculous? Maybe she could come back? I'll play music with a friend in a small bar. We had performed together before. He sings beautifully, but sadly. I have a gig in an art gallery. The idea is to play the theremin for 24 hours uninterrupted. It'll be difficult, but rewarding, I think. Hmm. But with everyone gone, who will feed these ghosts? Yeah, you're making the right move. There's nothing here anymore for the living. Hmm. Those poor horses. Oh. I saw a design on the bar. I saw the design on a barn somewhere. Would you believe it came to me in a dream? One of those dreams where you're lost somewhere, kind of familiar and anonymous, like a bus terminal. Anyway, you don't want to hear about that. I love hearing people's weird dreams. Everyone else knows where to go, but you're really confused. Marianne is quiet for a moment. You're holding some instructions or a map or something, but you can't read it. And you look up, and there it is. Sorry, I don't know why I told you that. It's nice. What's it for? Your day off, or is the bureau closed today? No, I'm on the clock. They sent me up here to help Wanda evaluate the site for reclamation. I drew the short straw, so I'm babysitting Wanda while she sleeps one off. Nobody at the bureau really expects us to get anything done, so I'm painting. Hmm. This does feel like the kind of place they would reclaim... Uh, 
they're gonna put this up on the old put this up on the old barn as part of the ceremony. I'm honored to tell you the truth. Maybe it'll be kind of like a marker. I never painted a grave marker before. A whole variety of weird different buildings around here. the station we turned into that one time. How about Greg Rabbit? Greg the Rabbit? No, like Rabbit is his last name. Well, there's no Greg or Rabbit here, not anymore at least. Great. It's our priv- priv? Privilege? Privilege. It is our privilege to inform you that your app- Apple- Application? Application. <laughs> has been accepted. Your studies can begin as soon as you arrive. Good job. Yeah, good job, Greg. I hope he got the message eventually. I wonder what he studied. Artichokes. What? Oh no, architecture. Someone sort of has roads, but they're more like paths. Look at this place. The library. I would have missed. Do you know how long you have to be asleep before you can start dreaming? A couple hours. Sometimes I think I'm dreaming even when I'm awake. Entirely possible. Even if you never go to sleep, you'll start dreaming on your feet. Hmm. Maybe we should test that in the lab someday. The people who built this library were always experimenting. They took nothing for granted, even sleep. We used to pull some pretty long hours at the TV station, really pushing our limits. Sometimes it bled into the work. Yeah, we were pretty experimental. It's just how we lived for a while there. We drew inspiration from another group who lived here before us. They built this. They called themselves the People of Nothing, fearless experimenters. They were a scientific community. Everything is an experiment. For me, every day is very different. Do I live experimentally? Whenever I make a decision, I never know what's going to happen next. Is that an experiment? Sure. Experimenting is abandoning expectation. I guess you could also call that playing, right? Yeah, this is a special place. I feel a little guilty. You fit right in here. Sure, it's a mess right now, but there's some residual energy from those fearless experimenters that I don't think will ever dissipate. I could stay here. I don't think I'd want to live in a place like this. What? Not, I, everyone's leaving. I don't know... Bug and Johnny walk up. Oh, hi. 
hey, are you, uh, what's good, little dude? We're talking about the library. We're talking about experiments. We're talking about the people who built it. Is this your family? Oh, are you in the van? Friends of yours? Are you in the van? What do you think, kid? We've got room for a drummer. No, I've got my own project. I'm great at drums. I know where all the buttons are. I should probably get back to Julian. Where is Julian? Ron dug a grave. City of Ladies. And ever since then, I've just been treating it like a little cafe for the town. But before that, it was the company store. Oh, sure, I worked in a mine for a bit. What kind of stuff did they stock? Then you know all about it. Never enough. We had to start a garden. Yeah? Do they sell little paper flowers down there? Paper flowers? That sounds kind of nice. Not even real flowers? Yeah, they were real nice. I still make them sometimes. I don't know why. I had to make my own vanilla extract, though. They never stocked that. They didn't stock vanilla? If you want, you promise to keep it secret. I'll pass on my waffle recipe before I head out. I will take my Ross waffle recipe to the grave. Why so secretive? That's okay. Uh, I don't really eat... <laughs> The mystery adds to the flavor. I just can't bear the thought of any son of a bitch from that power company eating one of my waffles. I once led a demonstration march right down this main strip, here back in the bad old days. Back before the power company pulled out, I was in fear of my life half the time. And of course, we had no formal union. They watched everyone. They had the cops on their side. I won't lie, it was harrowing, but I'm proud to say I marched in full view of the god and the company and everyone on that day. Well, I know I'm not sticking around. Do you think you'll do anything with this place? We ought to just set this place on fire. Hey, people gotta eat, right? Well, some people. We'll think of something. What are the acoustics like? Are they thinking of staying here? Hmm? 3A. Lay paper flat, 3B, bring bottom left corner up to top right corner, 3C, crease with firm, steady pressure along the diagonal fold. Hold on. to pop right. Press down the hole. Nikki applied in like gentle pressure. Loose her flowers felt more alive. She rolled her wrist. It was the sixth hour of her assigned company store shift, and she'd made dozens of flowers. Rod had brought a bouquet and cleaned up their stock that afternoon. Eleven. Repeat steps four A seven for each petal, taking care not to rip the filaments from step nine. Ah heck. I was hoping it would literally go through the whole process. I was gonna follow it, but I guess not. I'm gonna turn this into a butterfly. She imagined the insects that would pollinate paper flowers. Watercolor bees, or wasps that left ink stains when they stung. A commotion outside caught Nikki's attention. A man yelling, blows landing. She put down her work and stepped out just in time to see the crowd disperse. Hmm. Is that cat? Hello. Something brown strays up the side of the tree. Mouse? Squirrel? Too fast to tell. What was that? 
the joy, maybe? Clyde and Cass sat cross-legged in the shade of the light aircraft, Cass shuffling cards and Clyde absently flipping through a stack of unopened letters. Cass played cards and told fortunes with the same deck. Sometimes she'd switch it up mid-game or mid-divination until you never knew whether you were winning or losing, or good luck in the game might mean bad luck in some other part of your life. She'd predicted the decline of the circus, of course, then of course nobody had believed her. There were three Dervish brothers. Two were women. The oldest had flown to Rattanison's plane at the tail end of the war, then returned home to teach his younger sisters the art of trick flying. None of them were gifted pilots, but they were fearless. Demand for aerial stunts having faded almost completely, and many of the company having died or aged out of the profession, Clyde and Cass found the remaining pilots a steady flow of contract work, delivering mail to remote rural areas, but this place was abandoned. Cass's cards predicted they'd be here for quite a while. I really like this knife. It has an aura, you know what I mean? An aura. Yeah, like it wasn't exactly used to cut apples. It's meant for greater things. Yes, ma'am. Weather makes you kind of wish it never stopped raining. Six feet, that's a standard. Standard for people anyway, but... Oh. Six feet's the rule for a person. And let's say the average person is five foot nine. Maybe I ought to stick to the traditional depth out of respect. The neighbors were about 15 hands, so that's pretty close. Now that I can't figure... Now what I can't figure is, for purposes of burial, do you measure from the front legs or the back? Well, at least I'm putting the math in. If this were still company property, they'd be off to a landfill. Cold sons of bitches. Must have been four hours dragging them out of the water. I got their measurements down now, carved into my muscles, permanent. Oh, So heavy, waterlogged. God, that's not how I want to remember them. It's got so deep so fast. It shouldn't have been that deep there. I know who to blame, I tell you what. The neighbors were the soul of this shitty town. Now it's empty, even before we left. It's good to bury them here. Lucky I was still around to do it. Hmm. The poor neighbors. Oh, there he goes. Can we go in after him? In the bushes? Yeah. After the raccoon? Yeah. No. But don't bother raccoons. It's probably full of thorns. Yeah, but raccoon. It's not happening. Okay, okay. Oh, don't pout. Tell you what. If that raccoon comes back into town, we'll leave some food out for him. Yes, ma'am. Hey. Hey, don't run in the graveyard. Why not? It's... Disrespectful? People are trying to rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Tá bom, Ingrid. There's not one lady. Is she awake yet? Welcome over here. Where was she? Yeah, I don't miss number two. Oh, cool. The reason number two is to last. I bet. Do you think you'll go? Oh, look at that. Uh, I don't know. Now I'm just fucking around the rubble. Yeah, hard to say. Everybody's leaving, not that I blame them. That's the hardest thing about keeping an artistic community alive. Just getting people to show up. Sometimes you only need a few people. I think the ceremony is around dusk. Whoa, look at this. Emily pulls a videotape out of the rubble. Emily pulls a piece of slate adorned with a partial circuit diagram out of the rubble. Emily pulls a broken projector out of the rubble. Videotape? Oh, movies? The label's all muddy. Looks like... Oh, it's cave art. Cool, who knows if it'll play, though. Oh, this is Rita's tape. I should get this to her. Maybe she can clean it up. Hmm. Emily pulls a piece of slate adorned with partial circuit diagram out of the rubble. Emily pulls a broken projector out of the rubble. Hey, I've got one of those. It's, um... This is part of James' schematic for the Sandin image processor. Damn, this is valuable information. Very little I can salvage here. It wouldn't mean anything anyway. It's kind of a package deal. I think the ceremony is around dusk. You need the tapes and the station and the people. If one part is missing, the whole thing falls apart. Yeah, I've been there. Time to find a new package, honey. More easily said than done. Yeah, it's true. I think it's been true for a while now. This flood just made it unavoidable. We're gonna have a ceremony for the horses? The neighbors? Oh, looks like there's more stuff in here now. that cat. Uh -oh. Is that a cat? Hello. Can I not say hi to that cat? If that is a cat. I think it is. Oh, they're birds. It's a whole bunch of birds. Hey, this looks in pretty good shape. The city of Ladies. Interesting. No, I've never read it either.
good question. Let's take a look. Here we go. Minerva, Circe, Sappho. And some ladies from the Bible. <laughs> I think they all get together and build a city. Sounds nice. I'll get us a bus, bus ticket, eh? you oh, it's open can I go in cannot go in The whole part of town still. Aww. Hand me that rag, would you? The one with the embroidered bird on it. This one? Does it have a bird on it? Um, I think so. Don't you know what a bird looks like? Yeah, but it's pretty small. I thought it was some letters. Guess that could be a bird in there. Well, it's a rag, ain't it? As long as it's a rag, I guess it'll work for mop and sweat. Yeah, it's a rag for sure. Oh. What's Marianne doing? Oh, she's done with the painting. I'll hit there. Oh, I don't know, just a bunch of old stuff. It's hard to imagine someone ordering this. But these things, specifically, why these things? This folding rocking chair is nice, but it's so peculiar. Someone really wanted this chair. Now we're setting it all up, trying to reverse engineer this person we never met. I kind of feel like we are that person. We're making that person right now, together. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, thanks. That helps. Hmm. Seeing this all spin around is making me a little dizzy. Oh, the house that not still not all the way set up. Where are you flying to? Why? Yeah. I'm just checking to see if everything's working okay. 
You could fly her somewhere if you wanted to, though, right? Of course. So why don't you? There we go. Keep your distance. Ah. Part four, subjection B, no fun inhabitants. Part five, addendum, no soil. Ready, prior to the of that small group. Resident. Resident or visitor? Hero of reclaimed spaces, right? I did spot you easy enough. <laughs> I'm making a survey of the site for potential reclamation. We've had our eyes on the site for years. Initial results are promising. I think this may be the moment we finally reclaim this ghost town. Alright, well, don't set up shop just yet, huh? Yeah, this looks like the kind of place they would definitely take. Becoming an abandoned space more and more. Is there, uh, is there any more information on the the seer and all the the people who used to live here? Guy. Who did you say it was, brother? It was it who fell, by the way? When whiskey and blood run together. Did you hear anyone pray? I didn't hear nobody pray, dear brother. I didn't hear nobody pray. I heard the crash on the highway, and I didn't hear nobody pray. When I heard the crash on the highway, Julian, I knew that it was from the start. I went to the scene of destruction, and a picture was stamped on my heart. There was a whiskey and blood all together, mixed with glass where they lay. Death played her hand in destruction, but I didn't hear nobody pray. Wish I could change this sad story that I am telling you now. But there is no way I can change it. If somebody's life is now through. The soul has been called by the master. They died in a crash on the way. 
and I heard the groans of the dying. But I didn't hear nobody pray. Didn't hear nobody pray, dear brother. Didn't hear nobody pray. I heard the crash on the highway. But I didn't hear nobody pray. Hmm. Wonder if that's an actual song you can look up the melody to. Aww. A poor old guy. Went down here. Oh, what are you doing here? There's also a bunch of new stuff out of the mail. I even lived in there for a bit. No way. Yeah, too drafty. I moved out one winter and never looked back. It gets cold. Sure, when the sun is down. Nice old church, though. Really nice. Can make a nice workshop. There you go. They all really seem to like this town. Wow. Seems to be working okay. Julian's gonna love this. Ooh. I think I saw Julian earlier. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, it's gone now. Is it deep enough? Look like you got it about there. Aww. Hey y'all, thanks for sticking around for this. And we've all got places to... Well, if anybody still needs somewhere to go, be sure and speak up, okay? I think Ron's heading through the woods tonight, back to the road, if you want a caravan. You stay again? Yeah, sure, I'll stay. No, I'm heading out too. I don't... know? At least for a while. I just want to make sure everyone has somewhere to go. I think we can build something here again. This place has good bones. I don't... know? For right now, though, we got some friends to bury. The neighbors. 
Nikki has a poem, and I have a song. If anyone wants to say anything, though, um, I'll go first. The neighbors were kind, gentle, beautiful horses. I used to go on walks with the silver one out in the woods by... Why didn't anyone ever give them names? The silver one. Well, I guess he was gray, but his coat looked silver in the light, so I always called him that in my head. And the other one is the other one, and I love those horses. But you never know it if you heard me talk about them like that. So I'm sorry, silver one and other one. Sorry I don't have better names for you. You deserve better names. Also, sorry I'm so bad at this. Anybody else have anything to say? I've got something to say. I was thinking about when all those canned carrots showed up in the mail. We didn't give them names because their names weren't our, names weren't ours to give. Here go canned carrots. You all remember that? Somebody was calling around with some canned carrots they wanted to get rid of, and I guess Consolidated Power got word of it. So these cans of carrots showed up in the mail, and we didn't know where they came from at first. I tried some out. No flavor to them. Some of them were gray. Just awful. Rita said that's still okay to eat, like sometimes carrots just lose their color if they sit in a can too long. So nobody wanted them, really. Well, Aunt Connie came on TV with a message like, Hope the horses are enjoying their treat. And we thought, okay, these are for the neighbors, sure, horses love carrots, right? But the neighbors wouldn't touch them, wouldn't even look at them. You'd think they were canned rocks. We opened a couple dozen and set them all out by the water trough, and they were still there a day later. Even the raccoons steered clear. Then, of course, Consolidated sent us an invoice for every can we'd opened, already made out in company script. How do you like that? Aww. We didn't give them names because their names weren't ours to give. The horses were here before us, you know? They came with the people from Central America. You know, the Utopians, the people of nothing. The people of nothing arrived by horseback in October, and their first experiment was to free the horses. That, that was generations, generations ago, when the people and horses, they don't know when we started calling them the neighbors. We should have called them the people, I think. They were the only consistent residents of this place for over a hundred years. And now they're all gone. So where are the people now? Okay, I guess we better move on. Nikki, you ready? Uh, I wanted to also get your wrongs. Thanks for sticking around, like Emily said. It's so good to have you all here for this. Well, the weather turned out okay today, didn't it? I know some people had to leave already. I don't judge anyone for that. I think the neighbors would have liked this. All of us gathered here. They like to be around people. Maya, you and our other visitors might not know well yet for Towner. He came here to work with the company to dig a ditch, and the company worked him good and hard for less than he was worth, but it wasn't enough. They decided to use him up completely. After that, we became ungovernable, first out of shame, then in grief and anger. I wanted to write this poem because the neighbors led me through that time. This is a poem for the neighbors, but it's also for the town. I used, I used to sit, sit with them out in the woods. There's a clearing out there. It's about a 20 minutes walk directly away from everything. I mean, there's no reason to walk that direction unless you're going to this clearing. The neighbors like to graze there. There's a certain grass they like the best. It only grows in partial shade deep in the woods. I'd go out to that clearing and just watch them in their shame, grief, and anger, and they knew. Any of you who spent some time with these horses will remember. They knew just what I was feeling. I could tell. It radiated off them like sweat evaporating, creatures of pure compassion and forgiveness. That kind of forgiveness Frost meant when he wrote something we somehow haven't to deserve. When I go, I want to be buried out there in that clearing and feed that grass they love. Look for me under your good souls, as the fellow says. Nikki clears her throat and begins reading from the paper she's holding. I think the grass will never grow again. We all leave town and call that town ghosts. For we know who stayed in shame to pen and pay. And hope to mercy find right where we send. These hopes are withered, no mercy left. Who could forgive us now we buried our merciful friends? Nick, close your eyes for a moment before continuing. What? Ah, oh, on. Yes! Okay, I can, I can do that in a little bit, alright then.
Trusting my soul and deem in love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Yes, dear, the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him. Oh, 
Oh, damn. Oh, it says not finished.